Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. favorite pursuit again, checking a word in the dictionary, this time the word legend. Webster defines it as any story coming down from the past, especially one taken to be historical, though not verifiable. Well, let's have a look at the one I bring you now and see if it fits the definition. Oh, how nice. A lovely orchid in a lovely box. I wonder if it could be from Jacques. Let's see. Oh, here's a pen, but no card. Perhaps I spoke too soon. A revolver. 22 caliber. Recently fired. Now, there's a strange birthday present. mystery drama, The House by the Seine, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Exlax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There is a house in Paris beside the Seine, which might have been designed by Palladio. Perhaps it was, for all I know. Who was Palladio? Perhaps the greatest architect of all time. And who lives in this house? Well, if you ask the Cognoscenti and the Cosmopolitan across the world, kings and lovers, the famous and the infamous, they would tell you the world's most desirable woman, the incomparable and unique Marianne Duvier, friend and lover to half the world, actress and singer, mistress and mother, the toast of Paris. Excusez-moi, monsieur le gendarme. Uh, bonsoir, le gendarme. Eleven o'clock, eh? <laughs> you are on the streets late, riding your bicycle? You will observe, I work. I have this box of flowers to deliver to La Maison d'Abord de la Seine. Rue des Anges, Mademoiselle. Ah, the house beside the Seine. You do not need to tell me the street. All Paris knows where that is. I do not know. Should I? Oh, but of course. Because Mammy lives there. Your sweetheart? How should I know her? Oh, you're younger than I thought. Everybody, of course, knows Mammy. She is the sweetheart of Paris, of France, of the world. Why? Because she is the best actress in France, the best singer in Europe, the most beautiful woman of all ages. <laughs> so, once again I say it. Her given name may be Marianne Duvier, but every man dreams of her only as Mammy. She is not my sweetheart. She is the sweetheart of all the world. Is this the residence of Mademoiselle Marianne Duvier? Yes. Voila, for Mami. And the person who hired me to bring this said to wish her happy birthday. Uh, what is the person's name? Oh, he did not tell me. Uh, perhaps there is a card. Perhaps. All right, you can run along. What are you waiting for? A tip? No, I... Uh, well, come on, what? 
All these automobiles that are parked outside. Mercedes, Daimler, Rolls Royce, even American Cadillacs. So many important people. Next to Bastille Day, nothing is more important than Mademoiselle's birthday. And some even put Bastille Day second. Is she? Could I? Could I see her? Uh, Mommy? Oh, not tonight. Mommy is just returned from the theater and is dressing. For her party? Shh, shh, shh. That is a surprise. She does not know about it. Allez, vous en petit. I thought that was more guests. Who was it, Etienne? A boy on a bicycle uh, delivering these. <laughs> more flowers. <laughs> there is not only flowers in this box. What else? Feel. Too heavy. What do you think? A bomb? Oh, don't be silly. Not heavy enough. No. It does not tick. No. And who would send Mimi a bomb? She has no enemies. Except women. Women don't traffic in bombs. Poisons, yes. Bombs, no. The wisdom of the age is stated succinctly. But then who knows more than a butler? A French maid, <laughs> ma chérie. <laughs> no time for that now. What do you suppose is in this box besides flowers? Could be anything. I shall leave it here for her on the table. I don't know if I like that look. Is she nearly ready? Just putting on her perfume when I came down. Then I better warm the guests. Go. I see if there's enough champagne on ice. Annette. The wine is my province. Everything is checked. I'm sorry. Etienne. Uh, Mami. Mami. What is all this whispering going on with you two? Uh -uh. Something special about tonight. Some secret? I have no secrets but my kitchen. I will go see about supper. I am sure I am needed there. Etienne, you have a strange look about you. Something to say to me, perhaps? Just that Mademoiselle has never looked lovelier. Thank you. That's a pretty compliment. But older, don't you think? Uh uh. The rest of the world goes older, Mademoiselle. You grow only younger. You are nicely said, but it can't change the facts. Today, especially, I have grown older. And shall I tell you why? You have only to speak, and I listen. Always the perfect answer. Well, today is my birthday, Etienne, and I'm all dressed up. But nobody has asked me to the ball. Apparently, I shall have to spend it alone, since no one seems to know about it. I wished you happy birthday this morning. So you did. Oh, what is this on the table? A box uh, with some flowers which just came for you. Happy birthday, Mammy. I hope these will ensure your future. <laughs> Someone else who remembered not to forget. Oh, will you get the car, please, so I can begin to enjoy my evening as planned? I shall be happy to make sure that Mademoiselle enjoys the evening as planned. Oh, how nice a lovely orchid. I wonder if it could be from Jacques. Let's see. Oh, a pin, but no card. Perhaps I spoke too soon. A revolver. Twenty-two caliber. And recently fired. Now there's a strange birthday present. Why would anyone... Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! If you will excuse me, Ambassador, for just one moment, I shall be right back. Annette. Yes, Mademoiselle. Where is Etienne? In the wine cellar, shall I get No, me? I don't want to leave my guests too long. But I am concerned about Monsieur Jacques Baron. He must be waiting for me at Maxime's and... Oh, 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 no. He knows all about this party. He and Etienne were the ones who planned it. But he's not here yet. That's so strange. What could be keeping him? Mademoiselle Fieser Draft? Yes, but not a real one. Just a... <laughs> a cold shudder as if a ghost walked by. I'm worried about Jacques. Why should you worry? He had another appointment to keep before. I want you to go and get a chin for me, right away. Uh, oui, mademoiselle. Shall I answer the front door? No, I'll get that myself. Bring a chin back. Oui, mademoiselle. Je veux demander pardon. 
Est-ce que c'est la maison de... Oh, but I see it is. Hello, Minette. Minette? Nobody knows that name, but... Oh, Armand! Armand Claudette! <laughs> My real name. Oh. And now, after all these years, I know yours. <laughs> Marianne Duvier. Oh, that everybody, my friends, call me Mammy. Come in, come in. Uh, thank you. What brings you to my house? Out of the past, tonight? Well, I have been away, out of the country for many, many years. I am just returned to Paris, and tonight I go to the theater to see the fabulous actress Marianne Duvier. And what do I find out? She is my little compagnon de la guerre from the underground, whose real name I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to come backstage, but they would not let me, so I followed you home. But why didn't you come in sooner? Oh, at first I thought, uh, no, she will be tired. I must not trouble her tonight. So I am about to leave when suddenly... All the windows light up, and I can hear this big party. <laughs> so I think, well, if it is that big, what can one more matter? So I gather heart and ring the bell. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Where have you been all this year since that terrible night? We thought you must be dead. Uh, well, uh, I might as well have been. First the Germans, then the Russians. Prison camps? Oh, nearly 20 years of them. Then, ten years in America to bring back my strength. Oh, but uh, this is not a night for that. Uh, what is the celebration? My birthday. Oh. oh, yes, but I must get back to my guests. They're waiting for me to blow out the candles on my cake. How many candles? Oh, 21. <laughs> I must be sure to blow them all out. <laughs> to have your wish. Huh? Oh, Armand, if I had my wish, it would really be oh. 21. <laughs> In the heart of everyone who knows you, I am sure that is what you remain. You do in mine. Oh, dear Armand. Oh, good, you're back again, just at the right moment. I have a feeling, a, a strange feeling... Why? I, I, I don't know, but there are too many ghosts dancing tonight and old memories that whisper to me of death. <gasps> Come on, Amor. Take me back to my party. I do not want to look back. Something from the grave is yapping at my heels. <laughs> Excuse me, mademoiselle. What? Oh, Etienne, yes. I have sent for you because I'm worried about Monsieur Baron. Have you heard from him? No, mademoiselle. Well, I asked Annette to send you to me. Uh, but I don't know why. I, I have a strange presentiment. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, Etienne, you'd better go about your duties. Uh, pardon, mademoiselle, but I do have a message for you. From Jacques? No, mademoiselle. From an inspector of police. Where? Here? Yes, and he insists on seeing you. I tried to it's explain right, the Jerry. I have been half expecting something like this, I suppose. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Inspector Thierry, Paris Police. Uh, Inspector, I'm having a birthday party. I don't suppose this could wait. I am afraid not. I am not here on pleasure. I uh, do not have to ask you if you are Marianne Duvier, except as a formality. I am she. And uh, you are starring in the play The Changing Heart at the Theatre Elysee. I am. And the name of your leading man is Jacques Baron. Yes. You will prepare yourself for a shock, mademoiselle. Monsieur Baron is dead. Shot? How did you know? I didn't, I guessed. Am I right? Yes. He was found half an hour ago in your dressing room with a bullet through his head. I must warn you that anything you say from now on can be held in evidence against you. Marianne Duvier, named fondly by an adoring public and all the men in her life, Mami sweetheart. But apparently she is that to all men. 
save only one. Is the gun that nestled under the special flowers that were sent to her a murder weapon? I shall return shortly with Act Two. In the distance, muffled and forgotten now in the face of the news Inspector Tiro has brought, the celebration of Mami's birthday party continues. But the news of her leading man's death doesn't seem to have been a total surprise to Marianne Duvier, as indeed neither did her surprising birthday present, the gun whose cordite fumes were stronger than the perfume of the orchid underneath which it nestled. May I ask, when you saw him last? Yes, Inspector. He came to my dressing room after the show. And then he left, alive? No, as a matter of fact, he was still there when I left. Alive. Wasn't it strange for you to leave him in your dressing room? Not under circumstances. He had been going to see me home so I could change, and then we planned to go to Maxime's. Even though you had a birthday party waiting for you? Uh, no, that was a surprise. I didn't know about it. I see. And why didn't he see you home? He had a message which held him up. It meant he had to make some phone calls, and there is a phone in my dressing room and not in his. So he stayed to make them. Planning to join you later? Yes. Your name and uh, Monsieur Baron's uh, have been mentioned frequently in the papers as... Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, were you lovers? I don't think I'll answer that question. That, you see, is my business. As long as both of you were alive, but now that he is dead... You can have your answer. Yes, I love Jacques Baron. And I am not surprised at his death. Perhaps not even shocked. Because he was a man who was very careless of his life. It was suicide? At the first, one must think so. The gun was fired from very close. So close, the powder marks were clear. The hair was singed. But uh, no, it was not suicide. Why not? Because, mademoiselle, there was no gun. But someone might have removed the gun after... Do you think it was suicide? No. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to accompany me to the police station, mademoiselle. Am I under arrest? Of course not, uh, for the moment. There are certain formalities. I will try to make them as quick as possible. Very well. But uh, I, too, must face certain formalities. I have a house full of guests who deserve at least my... Mami, are you all right? Who is it? Emma. I'm on Claudette. May I enter? Oh, yes. Come in. Forgive me if I am intruding. Oh, it's quite all right. You could be just the man I need. Are you still a lawyer, Arma? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, close the door, please. This is Inspector Thiro of the Paris Police. He is here because Jacques Baron has just been found dead in my dressing room. What? You mean murdered? That seems to be what the inspector would like to take me to headquarters to discuss. Oh, well, I am going with you. It, it, it's not that serious, monsieur. Merely preliminary question. Uh, you're not going without a lawyer. Oh, very well, Amor. If you will volunteer. I'll be in my car and follow you to the station. Oh, I uh, forgot. I came looking for you to give you this. Your evening purse. I'll put it on the table. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize there was anything so heavy. No, that's all right. Just give it to me. I think, please, I will take the purse. It is your purse, Mademoiselle Duvier. Uh, yes, but I... Do well... you always carry a gun in it? Hmm, that has been fired recently. And just the right caliber. I am afraid now, Mami, you are under arrest. I am sorry we had to detain you, Mademoiselle Dubier. I won't pretend I found your accommodations deluxe, Inspector. Pardon, but uh, there is the evidence. Inspector, look at me. Do you truly believe me guilty? Mademoiselle, when I look at you, I can believe anything you want me to believe. 
But when I look at the evidence, then I must believe what I don't want to believe. I must tell you, as I have explained to your lawyer, that we kept you here to check fingerprints. Only yours are on the gun. And I must warn you that since you opened in this last play, all Paris has been buzzing about your romance with the man who died. And equally, all Paris knows the man and his reputation. His reputation? Uh, what shall I say? Uh, he was a notorious ladies' man. You must have known or suspected. Are you trying to tell me Jacques was taking advantage of me? No, not exactly. Still, if he was looking in another direction, if there had been another woman, well, under the circumstances, it would seem incredible, but... Uh, don't be ridiculous. I don't try to be. I only say you were in love with him. Yes. I have already said that. Am I still under arrest? Technically, yes. Actually, no. I am going to release you in the custody of your lawyer, Monsieur Claudet. How you trust me that much? I don't know. I am, do you see, a gambler. I am, how would you say it, uh, playing the odds. This thing is serious, Marianne. No matter what you may think, the police have a strong case. Nonsense, Armand. Once I tell the authorities the truth, I am in no danger. The truth? What truth? What I'm about to tell you. It goes back to those days of the underground. You remember your cover name? Oh, could I ever forget? Right now, the fox. I was Mignon. The kitten. And the chevalier? You could not forget him. Our leader? Oh, never. His real name was Jacques Baron. The actor. But we never knew each other's real names. Except for me. One by one, you all insisted on telling me your real names and who you were in real life. <gasps> Mon dear, what a prize I could have been if the Germans had caught me. We should have been ashamed of ourselves to put you in such a position. You of all of us. The one we most wanted to protect. Oh, <laughs> imagine. I never dreamed that the Chevalier could have been an actor. Oh, but lucky for me, he was. He started me in the theater. But Jacques was... More than an actor. Uh, what? A patriot. Still, all these past 30 years, he has crisscrossed Europe and behind the Iron Curtain, gathering invaluable information. He was most useful in East Europe. They trusted him, and they thought he was one of theirs. Is that why he died? Well, I only know he has had a list of names, which someone had promised to verify as the number one terrorist cell in France. He was carrying a great deal of money, and he had an appointment at 12.20. He uh, didn't say with whom? No. He said it was someone I might know, but that I had carried enough dangerous secrets in the past. Have you any idea what uh, happened to the list you said he had? I think Jacques was murdered for it. Uh, and the list will be gone forever? No, not quite. It isn't gone. I have it. You? Where, with you now? Well, of course not. I have it safely hidden. Why? Because sooner or later, the murderer is going to try to get it from me. Unless... Unless what? Unless I am arrested for murder. Oh, then you could give the names to the police. Oh, but what use would it serve? A list of names with the most important name missing? Who? The contact Jacques never made, the head man, the triple traitor. Uh, we're almost home to the house on the Seine. Come in with me, Amma. I think I know how, if the mysterious traitor doesn't get to me, just how I might get to him. <laughs> Mansell. Etienne, what are you doing? Oh. I was concerned about you, Mansell. After all, it is not every day one is arrested. Oh, thank you, Etienne. Fortunately, one is not arrested any longer. <laughs> oh, you too, Amère. Oh, my pauvre petite chère, Mansell. I was so worried. No, 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 it is all right. Oh, Etienne, would you please take Monsieur Claudet to the study and bring some whiskey and soda? 
Annette, you must do something besides crying over milk that is not yet spilled. You have only to ask. All oh, right, then. You bring me the Paris telephone directory. Yes. Armand, I will join you in a moment. Is Annette all right now? I hope so. Etienne has taken her to their quarters. Oh, yeah. Poor Annette. I'm her baby, but sometimes I don't realize she loves me that much. Who are you calling? Pierre Marchand. The florist. At this time of night? Oh, he's a friend. Oh, he may not be if you wake him. Hello? Oh, Pierre. So this is Mami. Yes, it is very important or I would not disturb you. Ah, you are sweet. Pierre, did you send me flowers tonight? Oh, no. Or did anyone from your shop? Oh, I see. But would you and uh, other stores have... Records of who bought orchids from you yesterday and where they were delivered? You would. I see. Oh, but not until then. No, no. That will be fine. Or at the theater, since I have a matinee tomorrow. Thank you. No, 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 no. I will send someone over for the list. <laughs> Merci. Mille fois. Bientôt. Uh, what was that all about? As soon as he gets to his shop tomorrow, he will check with the flower shops in this area who sold orchids, and then he will give me the list. Well, it is liable to be a long one. Friday is a night for orchids. Ah, but you underestimate my knowledge of who buys orchids for who in Paris. I can cut it down to size. Well, perhaps. <laughs> Are you really going to play the show tomorrow? Of course, why not? Well, because of you and Jacques. Uh, I, I thought perhaps... Uh, well, I mean... You were in love, no? <laughs> Come with me to the edge of the balcony, Armand. No, look. Paris dreams by night. How lovely. How serene. Yes, I was in love with Jacques, but we were not in love with each other. We were a cause. A dream of freedom. Just as you and I were once in love, bound by the same dream. Or have you forgotten? Ah, I have not forgotten. All these years I have been in love too. But not with a cause. With you, Mummy. I could not speak of it in those days because everything had to wait for tomorrow. And my particular tomorrow never came. Now, at last, we are together. And this time... This time? This time, I don't want to wait for tomorrow. Ah, well, I, I am afraid we still must. Till the riddle of the present and the past is solved. Good night, Armand. Good night, Mami. Until to... Oh, that impossible word again. You won't have to say it again, Armand. It isn't tomorrow. It is already today. I wonder what this one holds for us. I'm a little puzzled. Oh, I don't think Mommy really murdered Jacques Baron. It is obvious that someone is trying to frame her. But who? And then there is always this consideration. If Mami had been responsible and perhaps hoped the death would look like suicide, maybe someone made sure she wouldn't get away with it. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Have you been thinking about the murder of Jacques Baron during the intermission? I have. First, let's consider that from the facts, we still don't know it is a murder. It might have been suicide. After all, how much do we really know about Jacques or Armand or Annette and Etienne? The only one about whom we seem to know almost all is Marianne Duvier, called Mami. And she seems to know about everyone. So let's see what she comes up with. Come in. Ah, your performance was wonderful. Did you think so? Oh, oh. good. Matinees are very important for me to be at my best. I must not disappoint my ladies and the audience. 
or myself. Oh, I doubt if you ever disappoint either. Where was your match? She was exhausted after last night. I sent her home. Ah. Well, did you get the names from Pierre Marchand, the florist? Of your orchid fanciers? <laughs> Here. It's a long list. I don't care about the orchid fanciers. I want to know only who might have a fancy for a gun. Barjan, Tremouy, Brégé, Fragonard. <laughs> we can cross him off. Why? He's a French senator who buys an orchid every Friday night for a different girl in the Folie Bergère. <laughs> oh, he sounds suspicious to me. No, no, he's <laughs> not above reproach, but certainly above suspicion. <laughs> Now, let me see. Here is a Monsieur Deschamps. Deschamps. Friday was the 17th, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we can count him out. He's my postman. And every year he saves to buy an orchid for his wife on the anniversary. Then... <gasps> uh, Mama. Yeah, what is it? You see here? Yeah. M. Dupin, 1220 Rue Panine. It was in arrondissement. Do you notice that address? Well, it is not too chic, but... But the number. Hmm? Of course. There he is, our man. Why? Oh, don't you see? Jacques told me he had an appointment at 12.20. Well, of course, I thought he meant the time. But now, I must call the police. No. Why not? Uh, because uh, I have a better idea. This Dupont... <laughs> He can't be the head man. Why not? Because he would never have been foolish enough to use his real name when he bought the orchid. Oh, no, no, no. He is only an informer. But he can lead us to the real murderer. How? The list. You still have it? Yes. Ah, then we can make a trade. The list for the murderer's name? Why not? Dupont's name is probably on it. Or at least he can put us in touch with Jacques killer. He wanted the list enough to kill for it. It's dangerous. No, no. Give me the list. I'll go. No, I want to come too. Do you have a gun? Yes, I have one in the car. I am parked by the stage door. All right, good. Give me time to change. I'll meet you there. Nearly 45 minutes. I thought you'd change your mind. No, only my clothes. But so long. Well, wasn't it worth it? Look at me. <laughs> you are too much. What can I say? Oh, I don't say anything. I have to be back for the evening performance. We've wasted enough time as it is. Let's go. Well, this is it. 1220 Rue And we are about to meet Monsieur Dupont. Just a moment. You brought the gun? Just in case. Now, uh, shall I knock? Yes, Is there a bell? No. I'll knock again. Very well. There are lights on inside. Yes, but no one home. I wonder. Wait, let me see. Oh, it's open. Let's go in. Let me lead the way. Stay behind me. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? I mean, maybe we shouldn't... Oh, the lights, they went out. What caused that? I don't know. Overloaded wires, perhaps. Better get out of here. These old buildings are fire traps. Mm, or just plain traps. What does that mean? Oh, why don't you just reach for the switch and turn the lights back on? You know where it is. I know? Certainly. This is your headquarters, isn't it? So... You know. That you are Monsieur Dupont and the murderer and Mr. Head Spy? Of course. How long have you known? I have suspected from the beginning. Known when you made your first major slip. What slip? You recognize me from the theater, but not Jacques. Well, of course, he had changed. You hadn't. Ah, but you made a bigger mistake. What? You should have removed your name and address from the list you brought me from Pierre Marchand the florist. My name? Yes. Your new cover name, Henri Dupont. And this is your headquarters. You knew that before you came? Yes. And now that you are unmasked, do you think we might have some light? No, that's better. <laughs> you are an amazing woman. If you knew I was the one who sent you the orchid and the gun, 
Why did you let me bring you here? To kill me. What? Oh, isn't that what you planned? Oh, I have no doubt you intend to make it look like a suicide. Actress kills herself in remorse over lover slaying. Something like that? Oh, don't be silly. All I want from you is that other list. The names of the members of your terrorist cell? The names of my fellow patriots. Oh, really, don't be silly, Amma. You are no patriot. You are not in this for glory, but for the sheer thrill of it and the money. You would sell that list in a moment to the highest bidder. And the moment you got it, you would have killed me. Only you won't. I wouldn't be too sure of that. I am quite sure. You've no intention of making the same mistake as you did with poor Jacques. You didn't bring it with you. That's right, Alma. You are a fool, Mummy. Now, I have to kill you. No, Alma. Don't you see that I am on your side? <laughs> Why would I have risked my life by coming here unless it was to prove that? We need each other. We make a wonderful team. Not only as lovers, but in business as well. In business? Of course. Jacques was not in it for my reasons, for excitement, for danger, for money, as you are. That is why we should be good for each other. We are both without morals. We love danger, and we must have money. You, Mummy? Mm -hmm. You have all the money in the world. I am in debt up to my ears. Can you imagine what it costs to run the house beside the Seine? Salons, suppers, galas, constantly. It is the crossroads of the world. And no matter whether they are kings or commoners, my guests dine on champagne and caviar. I make a fortune as an actress, and I spend several times that fortune to remain who I am. A mummy, ageless, beautiful, unique, every man's sweetheart, his secret desire, adored by all, possessed by none. <laughs> Don't you understand that I would beg, borrow, steal, yes, even kill to maintain that position. <laughs> Mon Dieu, mami, you are magnificent. And so are you. You have done what I have never done yet. The ultimate, the most dangerous, the bravest. Oh, her mind is incredible. <laughs> we grew up together, you and I and Jacques, in a whole different society. The jungle of the resistance, the fundamental law of nature, kill or be killed, primitive, simple, real. We were brought up on it. We can never get it out of our blood. And you and I, the strong ones, not the weak, blooding ones like Jacques who babbled of patriotism, a sentimentalist and a fool with no place in our world. I applaud you for getting rid of him. <laughs> How did you manage it? Oh, well, it was simple enough. You helped me. I had been following him, and that night I slipped into the theater. When you left him alone in the dressing room, he made a phone call. It was to your house to tell them you were on your way back. I learned about the surprise party then. <laughs> I knew from your conversation that he hadn't revealed me yet. I moved quietly behind him as he talked, and when he hung up and turned, I shot him through the head. I intended to make it look like suicide. Magnificent. Resourceful. Ah, oh, what courage. Well, what changed your mind about the suicide? Well, I needed some hold over you, some lever to get the names. I was on my way to your party to renew old acquaintances, and I had the orchid I had bought with me. I slipped the gun under it, walked out of the theater when I couldn't find the list, and found a boy on a bicycle to deliver my flower. <laughs> I didn't expect Rock's body to be discovered so fast. The police got to before I could. But you did kill him in cold blood. <laughs> yes. Yes, I killed him. And you don't mind admitting it? Oh, not to you. The knowledge won't help you. What? Oh, you have given a magnificent performance. I would expect no less of you. But I cannot take chances. I trust no one. 
Goodbye, mummy. Ah. Don't move, monsieur. There are 12 other guns covering you. Drop your gun. George, Michel, hold him safely. Are you all right, mademoiselle? Quite. Is he? No, no, no. Just wounded in the arm. You. You did this, mummy. I'm afraid I did. But how? When I had mademoiselle in jail, she suggested I have a little chat with the Désir Bureau. That is our intelligence department. As you may know, they cleared her completely. Then she suggested this little trap for oh, you. So thoughtful of you and Armand to provide us with this theater for our melodrama. Do you have all you need, Inspector? More than enough. Then perhaps you can give me a police escort to my real theater. I have just time to make the evening uh, curtain. But when? When did you have time to set all this up? When you left me to get dressed. You are quite uncomplimentary, Armand. You don't really suppose it takes Mami 45 minutes to make a simple change. Home. Yes, mademoiselle. Let me take your cloak. Thank you, Etienne. Uh, Just uh, hang it there. Yes, mademoiselle. Annette has supper for you whenever you are ready. No, I don't think I'll eat tonight, Etienne. <laughs> Three performances in one day, and one of them exhausted me. I'm getting too old, I suppose. I think I will just sit out here on the terrace and look at the moon. <sighs> Mademoiselle is tired. Uh, tired. And sad. It's been a long day. The play missed Jacques tonight. And so did I. You really were in love with Monsieur Jacques. I am. Mommy, I love all men. As all men love, Mademoiselle, how could you ever choose? Perhaps that was the whole trouble. What? It's already a little too late, isn't it? I'm a little too old to be everything to one man anymore. So I shall just have to settle for being... Mommy. A remarkable woman in the classic tradition of the world's great actresses. Cleopatra, Lady Hamilton, Marie Antoinette, Mrs. Siddons, not all of whom performed on the stage, you will note, but all of whom were capable of weaving magic off stage, as Mami has proved in this story. I'll be back shortly. The next time you're in Paris, take a stroll down by the River Seine. Cross the Pont du Carousel and walk back towards the Pont Royal. You won't find the house by the Seine because, of course, it doesn't exist. But think what a lovely spot it would be to have a house. Looking across to the Tuileries, living today in the past. Of course, Mommy is only a legendary figure. But then, remember, legends have a way of outliving reality. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Hetty Galen, Gil Mack, and William Griffiths. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel.